So you see, today we're gonna do a sausage and gravy. I turn my heat, because it's an electric stove, all the way up, get it kind of kicking right off the bat. After it's heated, I then turn my temperature down. So use whatever sausage you like. I tend to use sausage that does not have, it's not pre-made or pre-packed sausage or have the skins on it. So that way I can break the sausage up any way I want. Some people like thick chunks of sausage. Some people like small chunks of sausage. There's nothing wrong with good meat. So use the meat as well as you like, however you like. There's no right or wrong or too much meat in anyone's world, I don't think. Can't go wrong with meat, right? But empty the entire packet right in. Also, tip, when stirring or mashing your meat up because you want to break it up, use a heat resistant spatula or a wood spatula. And that way it's easy to come off as well as it's easy to clean later. You'll see as I break up the meat, you know, I decide as I'm going how much chunks I want, like big chunks or small chunks. I usually go like a lot of medium chunks. As that begin to render, I'll then start seasoning. So no, we're not just gonna have meat with no seasoning. No one likes that. No one has time for that. You can season to your own taste. I personally like salt, pepper, onion powder, garlic powder. When I started this, I realized after I did not have my onion powder. So I used my Tony accessories and my Obey to kind of substitute for that because I know it has a lot of those flavors already in there, a lot of those seasonings already in there. I also like parsley and I like heat, so I also add um, cayenne pepper. So in doing the seasoning and stirring it up as you're, you know, cooking the sausage, that also seasons the meat as a whole. It also seasons that fat because that fat is what you're going to use to actually make your gravy.
as your sausage begins to brown, like you got a good brown on it, you can actually see the grease of the oil from the fats there. Nice and seasoned, as you'll see. Um, this is right there, you can actually separate it. Go ahead and continue to make sure you brown that really good. Um, some people let it cook off in the gravy itself. I tend to like to make sure that it's completely cooked before adding my flour to begin my gravy. Uh, but I use in that same one pot, I use the exact same thing. As you see, I take my flour, I pull the meat back and I have my halls there. And I put enough flour to make sure that I have a good thickener in there. You can always thin it out. It's a lot easier to thin it out if you need to versus having enough to thicken it in the beginning. But once you add your flour, you're gonna go ahead and just stir it all in. And that way, it's gonna adhere to the meat and everything else, don't worry about that. It's gonna get a nice, you don't even want it to brown. You just want it to kind of thicken and coat the entire pot. As you see, lift it all in. Now that you have it all mixed in, pour your chicken stock right in. Some people use water. I actually use chicken stock. It adds flavor. I use um, no or low sodium chicken stock or chicken broth. Um, and there's a difference just depending on how the thickness you want to go with. So and I just stirred it right on in. You've already got your flour, which is your binder there. So as you see, it starts to you know thicken kind of right away, but it's still very loose. Um, and to get that creamy consistency, I'm actually going to also add evaporated milk. Some people use regular dairy, which is totally fine, or just regular milk, which is totally fine. And if you're not watching calories, a little cream in there, a little light cream will do the trick as well. Uh, I use evaporated milk though. And then I continue to stir. And once I stir and get that all mixed in, as you'll see in the process of it, it'll actually start to thicken fairly quickly. Turn your heat down if it's thickening too fast for you um, and just kind of let it simmer. This is also where you want to kind of give it a taste test. This is part of the reason why I also make sure that I brown my sausage all the way through because at this point I want it to be cooked as I'm tasting things so I'm not kind of tasting raw meat. Um, big trick that you know you hear chefs talk about tasting spoons all the time. You don't see the fact that a lot of us do have three to four tasting spoons um, that's around us at all given time so we're not reusing spoons. Um, I'm at home so of course I don't have a plethora of Spoon. So here's four spoons so you can know that when I'm doing my taste test, we're not dipping the same spoon in. It's a habit that I have from working in a restaurant that you don't use the same spoon. You, you just don't. That's unsanitary. I know you're home, but someone else is eating it too. But don't use the same spoon. But you taste it. Um, do your taste test. And I want more garlic. So this is the point. I can add those in. I can add those extra flavors in and let them kind of mild in. Now, also don't forget, these flavors are still kind of cooking, so you don't want to go crazy and then have too much and when it cooks down and that season get a chance to marinate in there, you've now over seasoned. It happens. Um, but you...
Okay, and we're pretty much at the end. This is your sausage gravy. Just let it cook down to the thickness you want.